Hi, in this video we are going to see how we can set up a mount, what is the proper way to set up an equatorial mount and for this example I will use the Star Adventure. So um, if you look here on the table I have all the bits of equipment we need. We have the tripod, we have the Star Adventure, we have the equatorial wedge, the camera of course with the lens, we have the decimation bracket, the shaft and the cutter weight and some accessories we can use to make our our life easier. So here we are on the small balcony of my apartment in Brussels, and uh, this is my um, this is my testing ground. And this is because if I look over there, I can see Polaris in a small uh, gap between the trees. And if I look in that direction at this moment in time, I can see Sinus for a few hours. So that's enough to give a a go to test uh, new techniques or new piece of equipment. So the idea is now to show you how we can set up a mount in the field. Um, of course the steps are can be different from the different mount uh, than those that I devised for the Star Adventure, but the general idea is, 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 the, is the same. So for the Star Adventure I have devised a procedure in about 12 steps. So when you arrive in the location, you can use your cell phone with uh, some uh, um, application like Stellarium in order to verify that Polaris is visible or will be visible when it will be dark from your place. Um, and then that the intended target, the path through the night for the intended target is free of obstruction. So you don't have trees or other things that come in the middle between you and the target and so that you, your imaging time is cut short. So once everything is okay, it's time to set up uh, uh, your tripod. So for this example, we are going to use a, um, a photographic tripod. This is a Benro uh, Mac 3 series, is the model TMA28A. It's rather sturdier, but you see it's very lightweight, it's very compact. So first things to do is to understand what we are after, what we are looking after. So if to go on my location I have to hike and I have to carry all my gears in the backpack, then of course I will use uh, a tripod like that. And of course I will limit myself on uh, kind of astrophotography that I can do on this kind of lightweight tripod and that would be starry landscape or a wide star field or a wide field of deep sky object anyway i will not start to go into guiding or use extremely long focal length because the, while it is stable this uh, tripod is not good enough to uh, push the limit of the star adventure forward to, to so to push the star adventure to its limit so uh, this tripod is, has general section legs and we have three sections. Uh, what I advise you to do is not to extend the last section. This can be fairly thin and uh, you have uh, more joints and you can get some instability from there or vibration that are not done as quickly as you would like. So first of all, well, what we do is to extend our legs, maybe two sections for this tripod. And uh, once we have that, we place it on the ground. Now, of course, um, when we place on the ground, we have to consider where we are. If the ground is soft, we don't want to have the tripod sink under the weight of the payload. So we set it down, we spread the legs, and we check that everything is stable and uh, uh, the tripod doesn't sink. Okay, now the, the tripod is set, it's rather stable. Uh, what you can do also is to use this kind of hooks that you have here on any kind of tripod. You can take a bungee cord and uh, use your camera to pin the, the tripod down on the ground and this way you can increase the overall stability. Even if you have a center column that you can extend like so, don't go into the temptation of use it because that will further reduce stability. So the problem with this kind of photographic 
uh, tripod is that they stay fairly low on the ground. So when we see that when you have to manipulate your gear, you probably have to kneel before your, uh, before your tripod and that could be quite uncomfortable. Anyway, so we have our tripod. Next is to take the wedge of the Star Adventurer or equatorial wedge of your tracker and uh, we fit it on the tripod. Now, we know that this knob here that regulates the altitude, um, so basically the latitude for your location that has to point due north. So I know north is somewhere there because I know polar is, is there, is that direction. So here is how I would uh, orient my Star Adventurer. And then I can proceed, go on and snap the Star Adventurer on top. Now this is you, you close everything, everything is properly set. Now the Star Adventurer is already set for my latitude that is about 51 degrees north and uh, is roughly pointed at, at Polaris. Now when the Polaris comes in view, then it's time to do a course polar alignment so that then you don't have to uh, sway too much, what well, you don't have to correct too much once you have frame your target. Now, polar alignment, of course, is a crucial step and um, there are different ways you can do and um, depend also on the kind of uh, reticle or polar scope that you have in your mount. mount. So, for the Star Adventurer, in order to, to, to polar align the mount, if I can show you, here there are some graduated scale. So, you can use those scale and all you need to know is your latitude uh, your longitude, the time of the day, and the date of the of the month, the day of the month, and uh, nothing else. If you want to use an application like Polarscope Align Pro, then you need to be sure that uh, this tripod is leveled because this is the only way that you can link the image you see on the Polarscope with the image you see on your phone. And this is because when, when you use the app, you want, to ish, you want to put the Polaris where it's shown by the app. So the reticle inside the mount has to match exactly the orientation of the reticle shown on the phone. So I have described these steps in an article and I will put the link below in the description. So let's suppose that now we have done our course uh, alignment, of course, this is what I was telling before, when you have to look to put a line, you see you have to kneel and you have to do some contortionism in order to be able to see the polar scope through the axis of the polar scope. That's very important. You don't want to look it at an angle because then, of course, uh, the polaris will be seen, but will have some parallax error and it will not be set properly exactly where it wants to be. So there is one thing you can do and uh, one accessory that I can recommend you if you don't want to kneel on the ground is this kind of uh, uh, right angle viewfinder. You basically, you pop on the Star Adventurer like so. And now then you are free to look uh, through, this, through the polar scope in a more comfortable way. You can, you can just do that. You don't need to, to you know you don't need to kneel down and to bend uh, even further or sit on the ground and things like that if you do want to do that if you do need to go to do that i suggest you to buy uh, knee pads that you can strap on your trouser and these are those you can find in any construction uh, uh, shops um, so the construction worker they use this kind of uh, knee pads and use them to stay dry when you kneel on the ground to be comfortable don't you will not feel any gravel or or nothing so that is a very welcome accessory so let's suppose now we have um, we have aligned our mount course alignment of course there is no need for the moment to go very precise because we have still to do to carry on some task on the mount and you see it on such lightweight tripod it's enough manipulate a little bit uh, the payload and you have some changing well you, you you can move the mount so now what we want to do next we want to want 
for anything that is longer than a wide angle lens, what we, we need to do is to uh, mount this declination bracket on the start mentor. So this is allows us to uh, balance the payload on the on the start mentor. So we put the declination bracket in, and then we take the shaft with the counterweight, and we are going to screw it on the declination bracket like so. So we are going to screw it on the declination bracket like so and uh, we lock the counterweight so it doesn't slide further down. Um, now this is here we can put our polar scope illuminator so that this is a great way to mount your gear because through this cut you can still see Polaris and so you will be able to align to refine the polar alignment and to mount the polar scope illuminator to see better your reticle. Now um, the point when we have done that is to load to, to mount our camera. Now the camera, particularly if you have a long lens like this, well you, you, you don't want to you, you want to keep things balanced. So if you attach the camera directly through the screw on the camera body, of course you see that the weight is always on the lens and the camera will tip over so there will be some stress on the start venture in this direction. Um, even if you have a tripod collar, that is better, but will not probably uh, allow to a perfect balancing. Now, perfect balancing is, a C, is, is a achieved, achieved when the center of gravity of this of the ensemble, lens plus camera plus accessories, is sitting on the declination deck in line with the shaft and the counterweight. That is the best way to um, to balance your mount. Um, so to do that, a very simple and useful accessories is to have a dovetail plate like this. You can buy in any place, any shop for astrophotography. And to have a clamp like this for the dovetail. So what you do, instead to mount the camera directly on the definition plate, you mount the uh, the clamp and now on the clamp you mount the camera now the beauty is that you can slide the camera back and forth in order to find the equilibrium for the camera lens ensemble so uh, maybe you can see here I put a post-it that's where the center of gravity for this system is even with the accessory on top and so what you do simply is, is to slide your camera in and lock it in place, lock it well, and then you have also an extra security screw to prevent anything bad to your system. Now the camera is strongly fixed to the start ventura and uh, the problem is if you don't do that, you will never achieve a proper balancing because you will have the center of gravity of the lens plus camera that is not in line or not close to the line of the shaft and the counterweight. So in this case, we have the center of gravity that's sitting on the uh, declination deck of the Star Adventurer. That's great. So it's time now to mount everything on our camera that would be a red dot stop finder here to help us frame would be the dew eater to prevent fogging of the lens i will put some links in the description where you can read about these things and uh, you can put in the intervalometer so the idea is to create to build our setup in the configuration that is ready to uh, image now we have to find the balance of course you can see that the balancing is achieved by sliding the counterweight up and down. If I put it down, of 
course counterweight is much heavier than the camera side and that will put some strain and stress on the on the motor of the Star Adventurer so will not you know, probably will make worse to the tracking and with particular with long telephoto lenses like this one it is rather important that tracking is smooth so what you want to do is to try to have a zero balance first so in this case you see the camera side is 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 heavier so we go something like so you see that now the camera whatever i put it it stays uh, even upside down like this so that is a zero balance uh, is this zero balance bad or good some people say it's okay uh, some people say it's not ideal because this there is no weight on the gear or inside the unit of the Star Adventurer. So uh, the idea is that if you can put some stress uh, to, on the some unbalance, this will keep the, the the gears engaged inside the mount, and so we reduce any problem with backslash of the gear, and the tracking will be smooth. So because if we are in the northern hemisphere, what you want to do is to have the so-called uh, heavy east balance. Now the camera is pointing to north, so whatever is on my right is east. So if my target is in that direction and my configuration, my imaging configuration will be this, then the camera is on the east side of the Star Adventurer. If I'm going to the other case, this is on the west. So suppose that my target is sinus down there, so I would be probably imaging something like that at the end time. The Star Adventurer we move, we rotate my payload this way. So if I want to keep things engaged, what I would need to do is to make the counterweight side, because it's my east, slightly heavier than the camera. And so I will simply slide slightly downwards the counterweight so that now you see the camera is rotating slowly. So something like so and this 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 resistance to the rotation because the rotation is going this way the weight is pulling down is what reduce the backslash in the gears so we do that by considering which side the, our target is and uh, now we have achieved a good balance so now we can focus and i will put a link in the uh, a link in the description to an article where I explain how to focus properly on stars using telephoto lenses or any photographic lenses and um, you connect everything and uh, maybe you have the intervalometer you have the cable of the um, dew strip and you don't want this cable to get in the way of the rotation of the star adventurer or of your mount and so just check that every everything is loose as uh, so the, the rotation is not hindered by the by the cable so everything can rotate during the night no problem so once we do that um, and we have confirmed the focus then we have we can refine the um, the polar alignment because with all this manipulation uh, we so we we, we, we have moved the camera so we are now in the situation where let's say i'm going to image sinus that is down there so the mount is loosely aligned to polaris my camera is pointing at my target everything is mounted on my on my camera the camera is focused everything is ready to shoot now what i need to do is to uh, refine my polar alignment so i will double check that polaris is in the right position then I will take another test shot and I will check that for the uh, for the exposure time I choose that I have no star trail so everything in terms of tracking and polar alignment is okay I will check for the focus so everything is, is okay on the focus and I will check of course for the framing now because we are going to move uh, a bit the mount in order to refine polaris particularly if you use long telephoto lenses, then we have uh, probably um, moved the target in the field of view of the instrument. 
Now what you do not want to do is to go and do the clutch, rotate manually and stuff. So hopefully the correction is small and what I advise you to do is to use the button on the side of the start venture. This will rotate the, the motor and the payload at 12 times the rate of the star tracking. So the sidereal speed, 12 times the sidereal speed and also to adjust the inclination I would use the fine adjustment knob that is here on the declination deck and be sure that this clutch is strongly uh, locked so that this gear can work this fine tuning adjustment can work without any problem and uh, once everything is confirmed everything is good it's time for you to start your imaging section and to lightly walk away from the setup and if you need to check the progression of the, of the things um, remember that stomping hard around a lightweight setup like that can produce vibration that may not be dumped quickly enough by the tripod and so you may have um, you may ruin some uh, some light frame so avoid to continue to go back and forth from the mount just leave it there go far to go to sit on your chair somewhere stargaze with the binocular work on the second setup and then eventually come back once or twice during this period um, to check that everything is still working and do that lightly so i think this is pretty much how you the steps to set up a stop tracker a mount can be a different story uh, particularly if you have a good tool mount then you may need to do perform a two or three stars alignment in order to tell the good tool where you are oriented so that then you can just dial in your target and the camera will automatically go on the target and you are, will be ready to um, to image but the idea is, is is very simple set up the tripod as in the most stable way you can course alignment course polar align your mount to polaris mount everything on your mount focus prepare set your camera to the proper in the proper way for imaging and when you are go to the target when you are ready to do to start imaging the very last thing you do before stopping touching the mount is to refine the polar alignment and then when you are good to go take a test shot if everything is okay walk away lightly from the setup and let the things do the camera do its magic now um, there is one thing I want to address is about how to frame your target many people particular beginners feel that they need to use a ball head in order to be able to frame the sky now the ball head is advisable if you do starting landscapes so if you have a wide angle lens light equipment what you do is to ditch this declination bracket and the counterweight there is a ball head adapter coming with the start venture or with your mount and you directly mount the camera here and you use a ball head the ball head allows you to keep the horizon straight so to compose perfectly for your uh, starting landscape some people say it's useful for um, mosaic as well if you do deep sky astrophotography but you need to do a mosaic in order to photograph the, the, the region of sky you are interested I did that and I was able to do it without the use of any ball head uh, sometimes depending on how you mount the camera depending on the type of color you may have you can rotate the camera on the lens well or at least on the on the on the you can rotate the camera either in the refractor or the system camera lens on the attachment and so you can kind of um, recover some degrees of freedom in framing your object but for deep sky astrophotography you do not really need a precise control of the framing it's enough that you put your particularly if you are a wide field uh, astrophotography then you just center your uh, your target in the frame and, and you're good to go now this means that you do not need a ball head in order to frame any part of the sky and the reason why people get confused is because they do not realize that they have two degrees of freedom in this setup. One is of course the rotation of the Star Adventurer. You release the clutch, 
you have this rotation and because the mount is is uh, pointing to polaris people believe that okay i mount the camera in this way and i can only image things that are on this circle that the camera draws that's actually not true because below here below the deck of the declination plate you have a second degrees of freedom that is the rotation of the payload on the declination deck you just undo the clutch here the one that we tied nicely before and now the camera can rotate on the deck so how does it work now i told the science is down there on my right so what i would do is to do something like so and then if i need to point upward i will then slide or well, rotate the sun adventure this way now if i want to image something that is on the other side then i would rotate the star adventure in this way counterweight will go on the side of the target and then i will rotate the camera this way and all this part of the sky can be framed now if i want to frame myself on the video well then it's fairly easy there you go that is that is how you frame something there you want to frame something that is behind me well you just flip the camera this way and then you play in the usual way with the with the two degrees of freedom provided by the start mentor plus the declination deck and this is how you frame everything without a bald head and why the bald head is a problem is because the bald head will push the ensemble camera plus lens farther away from the rotation of the star adventure and so will make much difficult for this counterweight to um, go to balance the payload so you will have higher stress on the mount you can you will reduce the quality of the tracking and um, ball head can reduce can induce some flexure and uh, make it difficult that some vibration can happen but one thing that is also not ideal is that if you use long lens then um, with a ball head you have no fine tuning controls for uh, framing your target you can still use the motor of the star adventure but as soon as you are going to lose the knob to to to, to rotate to, to to improve the framing of your camera well everything will move like this on your on your ball head and that will be simply a nightmare so if you have to use the motor and if you have to use the uh, fine adjustment knob of the declination deck to adjust your um, your framing then there is no need for the ball head and uh, so this is pretty much how you fix how you set up your star adventure or a tracker and uh, your mount can be full grown equatorial mount can be a bit different but um, the idea the steps are pretty much the same um, the beauty of the target that well, of, of the tracker is that you can adjust this kind of setup with uh, the kind of intended target you want to photograph so let me let me take some okay so i have uh, unmount everything from my tripod this is the tripod we were using for setting up before and of course this is a very lightweight um, photographic tripod and it may have some instability issues if you really want to push the star adventure to its limit so the limits of the star adventure are quite high um, the payload is five kilos you can guide so you can use small refractors and long telephoto lenses and rather heavy equipment um, but of course if the star adventure is cap capable to support that weight and to work with that weight that is not the case for this kind of tripod so the fact if you work with a full grown uh, astrophotography mount the set is complete you have your heavy tripod you have your heavy head you have your heavy counterweights and you basically don't move from there the beauty of of the tracker like that is that the unit is fairly compact it's fairly light and so it can be of course is intended to do astrophotography in mobility so you need to fly to your destination you need to hike to your destination 
you or you simply uh, need to move away from the city where you live in then this is the perfect mount particularly if you don't have um, if you really don't want to image using a large telescope so i work with two star adventure and this is because in belgium the good nights are very scarce and uh, i want to take um, i want to maximize my time under the stars so i can work on two or three targets per night and that's great so one setup for the wide field astrophotography will be sit on this kind of tripod but for the for working with the 300 millimeter lens or even to guide or to use uh, my SkyMax for planetary work then I turn to something larger and this is you can see because if this is the, the, the tripod that we were using before, you see that is dwarfed by this tripod. This is the Skywatcher stainless steel tripod. is um, is six kilos in weight. It can support up to 30 kilos of payload. I have had the extended the extension column, so the pierre, in order to bring uh, my my pay my my Star Adventure higher and uh, here I have a leveling base in case I want to use a polar alignment method that requires the mount to be perfectly level to the ground and you see that basically this is not something you would like to hike from the to, to hike with but it's very nice it's very sturdy and nothing moves and when you put the Star Adventure on it I'm one, you can extend all the, the legs and basically I'm one meter seventy centimeter tall and uh, uh, I can comfortably look into the poloscope once I ra raise the tripod and uh, that will create, will make it very easy and comfortable to polar align. Plus you don't have any kind of vibra vibration whatsoever and uh, this is even cheaper cheaper than most photographic tripod because a good photographic tripod like this uh, need to be lightweight but yet need to be sturdier you want to have multi uh, you want to multi to have multi angle legs for maximum flexibility you need to be compact so you will have a locking mechanism for the for the section of the legs, maybe a rising column, some, or maybe the column can, that will, can also move and rotate so that you can really photograph from low ground. Nothing of this sort is required for astrophotography. And so you can, for the same price of this, you can buy the whole ensemble of the Skywatcher tripod with the Pierre and maybe even the leveling base. And, uh, so if you are really serious around about astrophotography and you are with the star tracker because you want to have this flexibility of choose which kind of setup you need for the location you are going to go then i advise you to get a good photographic tripod like this and for the time you want to push your mount to the maximum to have something sturdier and dedicated to uh, astrophotography so i think this is everything for this video and uh, i hope you have enjoyed it and see you next time.